We've had six elections in this country since 1999, the seventh being the last presidential election that was held on the 25th February 2023, which has been the most contentious of them all, an election that has divided Nigerians on the line of ethnicity and religion rather than on you know, character, competence and capacity. Therefore, as would be expected, the outcome of the election was, has been fiercely contested in the presidential election tribunal where the first and second runners up have continued to maintain that they won this election. And the question is, how? Who, who between these two probably lay claim to you know, have won the election? A candidate of the Labour Party, then we said Mr. Peter Obi has vowed that his mandate was stolen and given to the APC candidates. Um, as well, the Bola meeting with the president of Nigeria now, and that he is, he must, he say he must, you know, take back his mandate. That he must be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which of course happens to be the topic for this, you know, video, as which is Peter B. I must be the president of Nigeria. Do you think that? This amount to Peter B having, you know, a entitlement mentality, or is just a sore loser who cannot accept defeat. Welcome to my channel, She Needs Digest. I welcome on board my new subscribers as I continue to appreciate my returning subscribers. This is a channel where we get to speak out and say it as it is. Yes, Peter B has rounded off his case at the presidential election tribunal about two days ago <laughs> had the much dramatic presentation at the you know petitions at the tribunal where um, Peter Obi had one sought that the tribunal should grant him seven weeks to present 50 you know witnesses but of course um, he ended up um, you know, presenting 13 witnesses in three weeks now let's go down to what transpired in the tribunal up until when uh, peter b closed his case peter b started you know presentation of his case by tendering a report through a witness subpoenaed by the labor party who goes by the name clarita oga clarita oga is a cloud engineer an architect and employee of the Amazon Web Services Incorporated, uh, United States of America, a technology that was used by INEC in the 25th February uh, 2023 presidential election. So surprisingly, the, uh, the witness that was subpoenaed by the Labour Party to come in as to, you know, come to come in and attest to the efficacy of this, you know, cloud technology that was employed by Annette during this presidential election. I told the court that as a cloud engineer that she had sufficient knowledge to conclude that the BVAS, that's a prime model, you know, accreditation system and the IREP, which is the INEC uh, uh, Resort Viewing Portal, that these web servers are, in fact, they have 99.9% .9 success rate and could not have you could not have broken down that there is nothing like internet glitches that could have brought uh, brought this technology down that whatever happened as at that date that time that the result the presidential result could not be transmitted real time it wasn't a failure of the machine rather it was man-made manipulation to undermine you know the success of the 25th of um, the February 25th presidential election. Because there are many ways to kill the rat. And then we will um, we have other ways to invite INEC to come and answer the question. We have, uh, the, we wanted to put certain questions to INEC. And we didn't file the application within time. With regards to ICT experts? With, with regards to the, 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 uh, the purported um, uh, technical glitch, <clears throat> how it affects only presidential and did not affect national assembly. That was exactly what happened. Not necessarily that there was 
any technical glitch you know that you know prevented the transmission the real-time transmission of this result so in the cross-examination that was carried on um, the APC uh, the APC lawyers Tinimbo's lawyers and the INEC lawyer had you know come up to to cross-examine this uh, witness in just in order to discredit this witness only to discover that one the witness okay the, I mean some questions were asked and the witness said that one particular one that caught my attention was when they, they asked the witness if um, the witness had witnessed a personal um, election whether his whether the witness had contested in any election to be able to ascertain when uh, there's a, 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 a glitch that was man-made and a glitch that wasn't man-made and of course the witness went ahead to talk about that of that she was that she is actually a card carrying member a card carrying member of the Labour Party a card carrying member of the Labour Party and in any case that she even contested for the House of Red you know in her constituency in Cross River State and that there was a time that uh, when she went for uh, accreditation and that uh, uh, they could not find a data or the system the system broke down at that point so the question was if okay if the system broke down as at the time you were to use the system could it have been man-made or was a technical glitch from the system of course she said this particular one was technical glitch but what happened during the 25th february and uh, during the presidential election was man-made of course but and then but what really caught my attention i was like why would peter obi you know um come come up with um, a witness who is who is not just a card carrying member of the labor party but she also contested in that particular election don't you think that the credibility of such witness is questionable well i'm not here to preempt um, the, the rule in the court but i'm just i mean a witness for a witness statement to be taken seriously if your credibility is punctured then there's a problem that's also what i'm saying so as the court entered the second day Clarita Oga was again cross-examined by Tinimbu and INEC counsel who were trying to discredit her as she was asked to present her ID card if she was indeed an employee of the Amazon Web Services. Uh, and then she responded that um, she didn't have an ID card and that the, um, the company uh, usually sources their employment to a third party a, a subsidiary of the firm so she didn't have an id card and then they, they even went ahead to find out um which i think i have mentioned that earlier and uh, to further discredit her if she was a card current member of the labor party and um, a question that she confirmed that she wasn't just a card current member of the labor party she also contested for the house of reps in our constituency in cross river state but of course that dented our credibility because you probably uh, with that kind of discovery of course there's a huge dent on our uh, credibility as a witness on the day three of the presidential election tribunal saw peter obi and the labor party present three witnesses who attested to the seamless accreditation of voters on the same day but when it came to the transmission of the presidential election it became difficult of course Anik lawyer objected to the tendering of evidence by the Labour Party you know by the Labour Party of the total number of registered voters and the PVC collected in 32 states in the lead up to the presidential election now let's go to the fourth day proceeding in the presidential election tribunal where peter Obi came back fully prepared on day four and to you know make his case more convincing mr peter Obi tendered to the court vital documents you know uh, 
certified by INEX, such as the contending records of registered voters to two number of PVCs collected in the in the you know supplementary INEC results and uh, viewing portal and the IREF and um, reports from about I think three reports from three local government areas in Benue State, two local government areas in Cross River State, and twelve local government areas in Lagos State, and for one in one local government in Gombe State. These were the results collected, you know, uh, according to the Labour Party, according to Peter B, collected by INEC, and of course, these were tendered as evidence in, you know, in the courts. Curiously, another subpoenaed witness by Labour Party, uh, you know, Mr. Emmanuel Edith, um, uh, let me... Uh, just a quick aside on this. Why does it seem like um, most of the witnesses brought forward by Mr. Peter B are actually are either from um, South South or South East? Just asking. I mean, don't you think that um, there's a huge, huge question mark on their credibility? What happened to other other? Um, geopolitical zones i mean of the federation at least to add more credibility to the witness the witnesses mr peter b is bring i mean i'm just hearing the other one is a uh, clarita olga from cross river state this one is a emmanuel uh, emmanuel um, what's um, emmanuel edit this one is emmanuel edit and and then the other one from southeast or south uh, southeast and then south south just ask him so on the fifth day of proceedings in the presidential election tribunal, Peter B concluded his case where his lawyers called in the thirteenth witness to the witness stand. I think the chief spoke person of the Labour Party, Mr. Yamsa Tanku, who came in to say that the Labour Party should be, or Mr. Peter B should be declared the winner of they insisted that Mr. Peter Obi should be declared the winner of the election because he said most of the results that were not uploaded favored Mr. Peter Obi and his lawyers have gone ahead to support what the chief and spokesperson of the Labour Party said. Just take a listen. The election, the promises that INEC made to Nigerians through the national chairman and all the principal officers of the commission. Those promises, as you saw in those videos, were not kept. And I was particularly, uh, you saw there that um, a, a prominent national commissioner said that they were all not happy. You saw that. So that's all that we wanted Nigerians to see. We fielded our last witness today, who, as you can see, tendered very, very critical documents pertaining to the qualifications of the second respondent, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the academic qualifications, including the NYSE certificate, and then uh, the conviction, the criminal uh, forfeiture judgment uh, from uh, the U.S., as well as the Guinean passport. So all these documents were admitted by the court. Um, certainly, they don't expect me to be pleased with um, the conduct of INEC, which is now in the public domain. But that notwithstanding, we still um, made impressive presentation. There is one fact that can never be denied, that can never ever, ever be denied, and that is to say, we tendered blood ballot papers, 18,088. So, do you think Mr. Peter B is right by saying that he should be declared the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that he must be the President? I've asked this question a while ago. Do you think this amounts to Mr. Peter B having entitlement mentality or that he is a sore loser 
and that they cannot accept defeat. So this is where I draw the curtain for today. Thank you for finding the time to watch my video. If you like the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Strike on that notification bell so that you get to be notified whenever I have a video like this. Leave your comment down below and do not forget to subscribe to this channel. See you pretty soon. Peace out.